So try some different choices as well in kind of the geography, using different octaves for different different parts. Another thing, just to um, sew up, is like the end of the tube is sort of an eight bar, 16 bar in total, two lots of eight, eight bar sections where it rotates in that chromatic sequence. We've got some monitor there. When it rotates around there. And what I'm trying to do in that section is, is just be able to give it somewhere to go. So start high, and then pedal with the eighth notes, but also, can we take the mic out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right, sorry, chat. Um, so what I'm trying to do is, is give it some shape, even though it's two lots of eight bars, you know, give it some shape for the way out. So it's, it's long sustained notes on the very last time, and I kind of sort of third time through drive it with eights. Um, couple of other choices, you know, but all in all, it, it, it kind of plays itself once you get into it. Um, thanks for your comments, guys. We've got one from a Mac uh, out there. So thanks for joining us, Mac, today. Hope you're well. Um, he said, can we try it with slap? So, I mean, some choices. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, strings are really old, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. I mean, what we can do, it, it's sort of that, um, that middle eight, isn't it? You know, you could do the implied feel with a pop and then the thumb on, on the downbeat. You know, the real, real cool thing with that actually, it's got me um, creative juices flowing, so to speak. You could use like a glissando or a slide up to note. Thank you, Gospel Chops, no. Um, but it's kind of, uh, that, that's a really cool thing. <laughs> you know, uh, we can play about with it. I mean, I deliberately haven't gone there in all the instances, only because this was my first choice of instrument, really, when I heard the track. So slightly older strings it's not sort of crisp enough we may may swap over and do some other stuff um but it, it, it to me okay I, I think of a tune when i listen to it and a tune takes up a hundred percent sonic space when the mix is sort of finished and it's like a producer usually has in mind what where they want the hook of the tune to be and it could be anything you know a lot of r&b and rap stuff there might be a jangly guitar sound you know think um voodoo album d'angelo chicken grease you know there's that beautiful three three five dee, with that great 11th chord that's a great hook of course pino's on that so it's it's excellent um but think about i'm i'm really conscious about not filling space or getting in the way of the drums if you listen to the drum kit i would say that the complexity of that groove in terms of hits and and pops and and what have you is taken up quite a chunk um we got some more questions coming through guys yeah. got um, far away also, could also. you touch on a topic of making suspense full timing licks pauses mostly to create tension? Does that make any sense? Just say it again, mate. Who's it from? It's from Mac again. Mac. Mac's out could there. Could you touch on a topic of yeah. making suspense full timing licks yeah. pauses mostly to create tension? Okay, okay. Th th this is a really cool thing. I mean, I think when we first started streaming, I, I mentioned about the fact that I was using, or the tune is, is, has got a lot of inherent space in it anyway, full time. Let us know where you're from, Mac, as well. It'd be cool to get in touch. Um, and those of you that are joining us, please subscribe, guys, because, you know, we want to do some more of this. And we can only do it with numbers. Um, so <laughs> we were sort of alluding to the fact that the tune's got a lot of space anyway. Space. Two notes, hell of a lot of space. So... Something I use in the recording process to build suspense, you know, and it's not a new trick at all. Um, it's actually um, used throughout throughout um, the, the world of recording. You know, uh, Victor Wooten does some great um, talks and lectures in his in his base camp about this with Mr. Wellington. Um, so check those out. But it's about using octave and using the power of the same notes, but higher to build tension and space. You know, it's not the fact that the note isn't there, that would be space. It's the fact that I'm playing that note in a higher register to build tension. It's kind of what I did the first take. It sounds menacing, especially sort of palm muted. 
and there's using the, the lower notes to actually let it release a bit. If I play it there, Yeah, it's going to take up more space. It's a bigger sound. It's fuller. It's lower in the register. So one thing you can do, and if you think about those eight bars in the middle of the tune when I'm playing that, the call and response idea, because it's higher up the octave, it builds suspense. One way you could do it is actually play it the first time round high. Sorry, I'm speeding up. Yeah. Um, and then the second time, play it lower. Yeah. So by doing that, you're actually, the tension's in the first one because it's high, you're adding a bit more weight second time round, and then you're back into the chorus. <laughs> you know, you're back to the main tune. Um, building sort of tension out of licks. There was a lick that I put in that I tried to play as far in the pocket as I humanly could without actually coming in late on the next downbeat of beat one. Um, I can't remember where it is now, I'm just trying to get my space. Uh, yeah, that little lick. So that's in between, sorry, I'm getting my geography. There. This lick. <laughs> you know, and trying to, but one thing I try and do with, with, with licks is, is, especially in a recording situation, give yourself one. Yeah, that's, you know, not a euphemism. That is literally give yourself one lick but work out the best place for it. Getting involved early doors on just tracking a rhythm track, for example, like we're doing here, is I've got a lot of space and, you know, the player in me wants to fill it. But the reality is what you want to do is hold back, keep your powder dry, ladies and gents. Find that spot and usually, through experience, the best place to put them is in the link back to a double chorus or somewhere during the outro so that you can actually, when the tune's got momentum, there are other tunes out there, don't get me wrong, where, where the hook is kind of in the bass line. Um, Joss Stone um, fell in love with a boy. Great line. And, and if you listen to the production of that record, the bass is where it's at, you know, and it's kind of all gravitated around that. But in this tune, the, the lick, besides the call and response, that one. What I did with that to actually create some more tension was say, right, here's my meter, okay? One, two, three, four. Yeah, and let's look at beats four to one, okay? Beat four, beat one in the new bar. What I'm doing, playing as accurately as, as, as I can, hopefully, um, is I'm hitting the downbeats on one, yeah? But what I do whenever I play a lick in this instance is I, I play with the time, i.e. I play it a bit more what we call in the pocket, where I play it later, yeah? So if I play, yeah? in the pot, just on the beat. But by playing it in the pocket, listen to how much tension I can kind of give it. We give a click, guys, so we were, just so we can really hear where it's at. Thank you. Oh. And on the beat. Yeah. Yeah. So can you hear the difference between that? So in that last take, what I did kind of, I played more on that. So that if you think about the finished article when it's mixed, when that lick comes in, everything's, you know, on the down beats and there's a strong pulse and you're moving to it. And then all of a sudden you're going to hear this. And it'll be like, it's not, it doesn't stand out because it's complex. It doesn't stand out because it's louder than the instrument. It stands out because my time is more elastic. Yeah. Um, Tone-wise, I mean, I, I, I did a bit more tone on that. I just rolled the tone knob a, a bit further. It might have been a bit too much. Another thing for this kind of track, which would be great that I haven't got with me, is just a lump of foam. I mean, I don't know if you know about the early Music Mans, the pre um, Ernie Ball versions, uh, and actually the Ernie Ball versions to, to uh, some extent. They would have, like the old classic jazz basses did, little foam saddles under the bridge so you can vary the amount of damping. Sometimes when I'm tracking, I just chuck a piece of foam. It's actually an old like dish thing. <laughs> and I, I just stuff it under the, under the bridge to kind of mute it. So I can get that kind of tone with little sustain whilst playing fingers, which is really, 
you know, and you can play it, which is really dirty. So that, that you know, if, if time permits, using the phone would certainly help. Um, got any more comments, guys? Where's Mac from, anyway? Yes. Well, Mac is from Poland. Hey, Mac. He really appreciated uh, that. Uh, uh, Sue, say something to Mac. Introduce, introduce Susie. Susie. Uh, we've got we've got a, a small um, crew working on audio and, and visuals, and we got Susie in here. Go on, Susie, so give me something Polish to say to Mac. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, well, Unbelievable. The next question is from Burak, and he says, "I'm he's having trouble filling notes right now. Can you give some tips about fillings?" Okay, right. This is a great topic. Um, what's his name? Sorry, Burak. Yes. B -U -R -A -K. Okay. Burak, good to meet you, man. Thanks for joining us. Um, tell your friends, get them to subscribe. Last time I visited, Poland was massive. <laughs> okay, um, okay, fill in. Okay, so let's let's strip all this stuff back. It's but it's not about what we have to play. How complicated? Where do we start? Well, first off, there's some massive clues always in music, and your biggest one: what is the key? Okay, what is the key signal of this, of this tune? Well. I know, because I'll bring up my little crib sheet. I haven't got the tea-stained one. I don't know, you got any zoom on there, Suze? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got the key signature here, bass clef. I mean, biggest clues are the fact that it, it's in a flat signature, so the one back is the actual tonal centre of this tune, so that is a flat sign on the E line of the stave. So I know I'm in the E-flat major, whose relative minor is, what's the sixth note? One, two, three, four, five, six, C. So... I'm in the key of C minor. So straight away, without doing too much homework, I've already given myself two options. You're going, how the hell, what, what, what are those two options? The two options, guys, are the fact that it's either in E flat major or C minor. They're the same thing, okay? They, they share the same series of notes, so think of them as one. Do you know what I mean? Um, that's one common misconception with teaching students over the years. It's like, yeah, but it's in G, isn't it? That's an E minor, okay? And it, it's the same thing. Think of it as the same series of notes. But depending on where you play them, those licks, whether you start them in E flat major in this case or in gravitating around C minor, you can really change the feel of this tune or the, 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 the sound of your lick. So the first thing I, I think about is let's just look at a simple minor pentatonic, okay? And I said minor pentatonic, so we're going to gravitate around the root note of C. So remember, penta means five, so it's a five note scale. And in this case, it's root note of C, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and then your last note is the flattened seventh. So listen to it. And then if we go back, we're at the octave, or the, the, um, the root note again. One, two, three, four, five. So you've got that shape there. You, you can extend it. Okay, well I'm back there, how do I go on again? Okay, so now I've got a different shape up here. Now, it doesn't sound like a lick, but it sounds like it fits within the tune. If I play the C um, minor seventh chord, just voice it here, root minor third, flat and seventh. Okay, hold that kind of harmony in your head. Yeah, you can hear all those notes working in it, but it doesn't sound musical yet. Okay. Best things are, what are scales? Well, scales are your palette. They're like, you know, I'm not talking Van Gogh, I'm not saying go and cut your ear off. I'm saying scales are color choices for the musician to make. And that is exactly what that is. Okay, so let's take just the shape. Um, for those of you, if you have got your instrument, go and grab it. Um, so I'm playing the C from the eighth fret E string. Okay, so let's let's just play around, right? Um, let's build a lick. So, what I'm going to do is actually play my lick to end on the root note, not start from the root note. Now, there's a, there's a little trick straight away. Is if you start from the root note, where are you gonna? Where where can you go? Well, let's not start from the root note. Let's play a simple. Let's just pick three notes. Three notes. Okay. There you go. One, two, three. What notes were those? Um, hang on. <laughs> F, E flat, C. Yeah? So I'm playing like a descending line. And remember, those notes are contained in C minor pentatonic. Let's put it in context. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, so um, I'm fitting it in. I'm kind of messing about a little bit, some wide vibrato. Um, but there's the lip. Yeah, and because I'm ending on the one, I'm thinking, okay, where is my chord sequence? What is leading up to that? Well, the chord sequence is that little turnaround from the F minor seventh, B flat, and there's the one. So we can put it in there. Let's play the whole phrase so you can kind of hear it in your head. Yeah. So again, and, and think, why does that stand out? Two reasons, it's minimal. Second reason is the fact that it's a higher register to the other stuff I played. Well, let's turn it on its head. Let's play the same lick, but lower. Okay, right. So we're up here. Let's do it in eight. Tension. Yeah. So flip it on its head. It's the same lick, I've, it's, and that's just three notes. What else can we do? We can make them more sustained, more uh, so longer in duration. That's that's kind of a very short lick. Okay, let's let's extend it. Yeah, there's my lick. So I'm going down. Okay, and I'm not changing direction. So I'm. If you think about it, where am I going to use this lick? So when I'm higher in the register, maybe, or at a point where I want to, I've built the tension with higher octaves, and I want to descend down for a lick. And the actual lick. Think about where we started this whole thing, Burak. Is we started in C minor. I flipped that pentatonic scale on its head and said its relative major is E flat major. Yeah, and that is the E flat major pentatonic with a little hammer on. There's two actually. I'm starting from the ninth or the note of F. Here's an E flat major pentatonic. Now look at my shape. Try it. What's weird about this one is we're not finishing it on the roof. <laughs> Can't fit it in. I have to work out where it is. Give me a sec. I'm just playing about now, sorry. But that, you know, because it's not landing on the root note, it's actually a little bit harder for me to kind of squeeze that in there. That's where it would be. So I kind of play an inversion on the first chord. It's still a C minor, but I'm choosing to play it um, a C minor over an E flat. That would sound cool. With a bend as well. Yeah, so um, that's kind of my first starting point with licks, is see how little you can get away with to begin with, and then in your practice routine, see what else you can put in there to expand the harmony. You know, I haven't even approached, like, um, uh, what you call them, passing tones yet. I haven't even squeezed any of that in. <laughs> You see now what's happening is suddenly it's turned into me playing licks rather than playing a song and and that's why a great piece of advice is give yourself that one lick find the place that it fits in the tune and a lot of that is about instinct you know as you're playing you're kind of getting in the groove you're feeling it and and music should be a vehicle for expression guys so as you play there comes a time where your confidence just might be buoyed up you don't hear the click anymore you're just hearing the tone of the instrument and you're grooving and you're, you're feeling it that's the time to try a lick but not the chop you've just been practicing the chop or the lick that is simple that is two notes that is three notes but put it a little bit behind the beat make it lazy make it stand out okay we're going to have a quick break guys and we're going to come straight back to you peace <laughs>